Buckle your seatbelt. It's time for another episode of the Prepper Recon Podcast. Whether your plan is to bug out or bug in, CampingSurvival.com has all of your preparedness needs, including fish antibiotics, long-term storage food, and water filters. Use coupon code PREPPERRECON for 5% off your order at CampingSurvival.com. Get prepared before disaster strikes. PrepperRecon.com offers Molly-compatible individual first aid kits for your home, auto, or bug-out bag. These kits have everything you need to address a traumatic injury, including an Israeli battle dressing, quick clot, EMT shear, suture kit, steri strips, tourniquet, tough strip bandages, and so much more. $99 includes shipping. Go to PrepperRecon.com and click the store tab at the top of the home page. Order today before it's too late. Hi, Preppers and Patriots. We're having another Prepper powwow today, so it's just you and me. Um, on our last Prepper powwow, I talked about the basics of getting ready for hurricane season, and I said we'd come back and do another full show just on food storage. So uh, because it's such a big topic, um, that's what we'll be talking about today. For new preppers, getting up to speed for hurricane season, I recommended that they put together a month's worth of food and, and try to do that rather quickly. So hopefully folks who listen to that show have been able to do that over the past week or so. And uh, next, we're going to aim at building our food storage up to about six months. Uh, and with the ultimate goal of trying to get it up to an entire year's worth of storable food. And if you think about it, food storage is one of the biggest prepper stories in the Bible. Uh, Joseph was able to store up seven years worth of food for all of Egypt and his family. So we should be able to tackle at least six months to a year. Um, for starters, rice is absolutely the cheapest food we can store and it's going to provide lots of calories, and it stores for a really long time. Uh, stick with white rice. It stores for about 20 years. Brown rice still has the bran, which contains fats, and that can turn rancid over time. The most you should ever plan on keeping brown rice is about a year. Uh, if it's refrigerated or you've got a really good uh, dark, cool place to keep it, uh, you might you might get a year and a half or two years out of it. But uh, don't plan on it for long-term storage food. About 3 billion or almost half of the world's population depend on rice as their primary dietary staple. So uh, it's a really, really good source of, uh, of food and uh, keeps a lot of folks alive around the world. We use rice for the foundation of our food storage in our home. We buy the 20-pound bags. We get those at either Walmart or Publix. Sometimes my wife can catch those on sale for as cheap as $5.99 a bag. Uh, I think Walmart, I think their brand, I think is around $7.99 a bag for the 20-pound bag. And uh, what we do is we leave that in the plastic bag that it comes in, and we'll throw that in a five-gallon Home Depot bucket, and we'll stick a Gamma Seal lid on there. We like the Gamma Seal lids because they're uh, you you clamp down the seal on the outside, and then it has a uh, uh, a lid that screws in or screws out, and has another seal on it. So they're resealable, and uh, you can use them over and over, and always have a seal, and they're they're easy to get into to you know, get some things out and then seal it back up. Uh, those run about $10 a piece if you, if you buy them in bulk. Um, with a 20 pound bag of rice in one of those five gallon Home Depot buckets, you can fit a, a box of salt and a box of baking soda and about six or seven pounds of beans also in the same bucket and, and seal that up. Now, if money's tight, you don't have to use the Gamma Seal lids. Uh, you can buy the regular lids at Home Depot. Those are about two dollars, and I, I don't think you'll be able to reseal those. But they'll they'll keep a good seal as long as you leave it uh, contained and you don't uh, pull it out until you're ready to to use it. And you have and you you have to have it. Um, so they should be fine for long term storage food as long as you're not planning on getting in and out of that bucket all of the time and breaking the seal. Now, I mentioned that we store baking soda in every bucket, and that's because if you'll put a tablespoon of baking soda in with your beans when you soak them, you'll cut your cook time in about half, and that's really, really big when fuel resources are tight. We like black beans, red beans, navy beans, uh, split peas, black-eyed peas. Um, all of those are right around a dollar a pound, a little more. Uh, for the store brands, uh, maybe two dollars a pound for for um, the premium brands. Um, 
we don't buy pinto beans anymore because we've had those mold on us two times in a row. So uh, we've kind of cut those out of our our food storage plan. But uh, we've never had any problems with the rest of them. We've been storing those for years and years. And we eat we eat a lot of beans and rice. We like them with steak, fish, chicken, uh, pork. They go with just about anything. So uh, it's a uh, something that we do eat a lot and that's that's important when you're thinking about what's going to be the foundation of your long-term storage food yes when you're hungry you'll eat anything but uh, you're going to have a a much better experience if you're storing up things that that you like to eat Um, and uh, and if you are going to store a lot of rice and beans definitely get them out and and cook some and and try it out and and get the recipes down and get used to cooking it because uh that learning curve is so much easier right now when it's not a life or death situation. And since we cook, since we eat a lot of beans, when I cook beans, I'll usually cook a pound to maybe a pound and a half, maybe even two pounds in a really, really big pot. And I'll fill that pot up with about four to five times as much water as I have beans in the pot. So, um, and then I'll let that soak overnight. I'll store in, I'll stir in uh, maybe a, a tablespoon, maybe two tablespoons of baking soda. If it's two pounds, I'll put in two tablespoons, and I'll let that soak overnight. And then I'll simmer that for about an hour to an hour and a half. Um, season it with a little garlic powder, onion powder, uh, maybe a little country ham fat if I've got some of that laying around, uh, salt and pepper. I don't typically put my salt in until my beans are pretty much finished cooking Cooking because uh, the salt can make them a little hard, uh, add a little time to the cook time. So just uh, just as a matter of uh, keeping that habit to keep the, the shortest cook time as possible for a uh, survival or disaster scenario, uh, I just uh, I don't put the salt in until they're finished cooking. Then what I'll do is I'll portion those beans out into several small containers and just stick those in the freezer. And then when I'm in the mood for red beans or black beans or uh, navy beans or whatever, I'll just pull those out of the the freezer. Or if we made uh, split pea soup, sometimes we'll make a couple of pounds of uh, split peas into a big, huge pot of split pea soup with some onions and carrots and a little diced ham in there. And... uh, and we'll freeze it so that uh, we've got it for a couple of months and we don't have to um, cook another pot. And uh, beans, they won't store quite as long as rice. Uh, most most beans are going to store for five to eight years, um, but that's that's a pretty good while. And they are an excellent source of protein and fiber. So it's uh, between rice and beans, that's a that's a really good foundation for for uh, a meal, and uh, especially in, in a survival situation. Dehydrating is another great food storage option. We haven't done any dehydrating. It is something that I'd like to experiment with. Uh, we've got a sun oven, which I love, and we have cooked with it, and we love cooking with that with the sun oven. And you can do dehydrating with the sun oven, and so that is something I want to try to uh, do a little experiment this summer when I get a little time carved out between books and podcasts and keeping the the uh, website up and running. So uh, that's definitely something I want to try out. Uh, but we do buy a lot of dehydrated stuff. Uh, my wife finds great deals on dehydrated fruits from from big lots. Um, she gets bananas, mangoes, pineapples, papaya. We get all that stuff from big lots for like a dollar fifty a, a pouch. Um, we'd even we'd stocked up a few packages of the dehydrated apples. Um, uh, the uh, we got those the the great value ones from Walmart. They've got pretty decent prices on on dehydrated fruit as well. Uh, if you don't mind the, the the great value brand, and we we store a lot of nuts, and that's another thing she finds a lot of at uh, at Big Lots. And probably most of the time, it's going to be cheaper to buy the dehydrated foods than like the apples, pineapples, uh, bananas, and things like that than it is to to buy the fresh fruit and and then dehydrate it yourself. Uh, one of the things is that that when you when you purchase the already dehydrated food, it's it's already sealed for uh, a maximum time, and um, and and it's just a big a big time burner there that you don't have to expend on on doing it but it is something that too good to have the skill so that's one of the things i'm going to do i'm going to try dehydrating some bananas and maybe some apples 
this year just just to get the skill down and make sure that I'm able to do it in a uh, disaster situation. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. The dollar's lost over 90% of its purchasing power since 1971. Silver, on the other hand, has proven to be a very stable form of wealth preservation over the years. And where do you buy silver? Silver Silver.com, of course. Silver.com offers fantastic prices on gold and silver. Check out silver.com today. Ready-Made Resources is a trusted name in the prepper community because they've been around for 18 years. They offer great prices on night vision, water filtration, long-term storage food, solar energy components, and provide free technical service. Get ready for an uncertain future at readymaderesources.com. We just passed the third anniversary of the Prepper Recon podcast, and it couldn't have happened without you. To say thanks, I want to send you a free PDF copy of the 7-Step Survival Plan. It's a basic blueprint that will help you to prioritize your efforts and make sure you're not missing any important areas of prepping. To get your free copy, simply go to PrepperRecon.com and click the 7-Step Survival Plan free PDF banner that's directly under the menu bar at the top of the homepage. Thanks again for three great years of the Prepper Recon podcast. Uh, canned goods, those are great. Um, I mentioned in the the hurricane show that uh, canned pastas are a great thing uh, for for emergency food because there's a lot of fat and calories and carbohydrates in there that you can just pop the top and and it's a ready to eat meal. We don't store a lot of that stuff because we don't eat it, but uh, just just to have a little bit of it um, for emergencies for that you know first. Uh, uh, 72 hours after after a power outage and a hurricane or something like that when you're trying to um, get things together or it's, and that's good stuff for for your bug out bag as well I, uh, we did keep some um, some uh, spaghettios in in our bug out bags for for a while and canned goods will last just about forever as long as the can isn't dented or there's no rust marks and uh, uh, nowhere where it looks like it's going to get punctured or ruptured um, they'll last for just about ever. Older canned foods are going to lose some of their taste and they're going to lose a little bit of their nutritional value over time, but they're always going to be safe to eat. Um, so, you, and as we mentioned in the hurricane show, make sure if you're storing a lot of canned goods that you have at least uh, uh, two manual can openers because uh, you want to have an extra one in case one breaks or you lose one. We do store some canned vegetables and uh, a lot of canned pasta sauce. We store a lot of that because that's something that we use all the time for spaghetti bolognese or lasagna or um, uh, pizza bread or whatever. So uh, we like the Hunt's uh, pasta sauce in the can because it stores a long time and it's a really good value. It's usually about a dollar a can. They've got different flavors and, and we really like it. Um, and then, of course, we've we've got the pasta to go with that. Um, now like the rice, you need to keep your pasta in some type of container, um, that's going to keep it away from, from bugs and pests and things. We use the buckets for the rice. Now for the pasta, we usually keep that in, um, we vacuum seal that. Um, we've got the food saver vacuum sealer. And the great thing about that is you can buy the rolls of plastic for making the bags for the booth food saver. And you can cut it out and make whatever bag size you need. So you really eliminate any waste with having a bag that's that's too large um, or having a bunch of bags that are too small and you can't use them for anything. So uh, we really like that. The the Food Saver Vacuum Sealer it was a, uh, a great thing that we got and we really enjoy using it. We use that also for for couscous or any type of a grain-based food because uh, the weevils really like to get anything like into things like that. Um, a lot of times you'll you'll bring stuff home from the store and they'll already have the weevil eggs in it. And if it's in one thing and you've got everything in a, in a cupboard, then what happens is they breed and the next thing you know, they're in everything. So if you've got everything sort of uh, – uh, Anything that's in the vacuum sealer, they don't have any air, so that kills them. So if there are there were any larvae in in the packaging there, um, they're 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 going to die because they're never going to have any air. Now, if you are storing your pasta or your rice or uh, couscous or whatever what have you, uh, maybe even beans, uh, we've had weevils in uh, in the the green peas, split peas. Sometimes you'll get weevils in those as well. Uh, you know, if you if you get them and they come up in one bucket. At least they're contained. So, um, 
you won't have to worry about them being in everything because they were in the one bucket or uh, if you had them sealed up in the uh, in the uh, vacuum sealer then then they would be they would be contained and they wouldn't be able to get into everything and uh, and then you'd have something to give to your family members who mock you for prepping all the time yeah here i just happen to have a, a nice bucket of uh, weevil infested uh, pasta and, and rice and uh, split peas for you so uh, they won't kill you it's a little extra protein and uh, enjoy and leave me alone and another thing we use our uh, food saver vacuum sealer for is for flour and sugar of course you can get weevils in flour um, and then you can get ants in your in your sugar um, and and you just don't want to be uh, doing anything that's going to create new problems though we're, we're here to try to fix problems and we don't want to do stuff that's going to uh, make your life harder by drawing ants and bugs and things Canning's great for food storage. Uh, we've got a Presto pressure canner, which if you're going to be canning meat, you have to have a pressure canner. And always use new lids for canning meat. And on the subject of lids, all of the metal lids we've bought have worked out pretty good for us. We've gotten like a like an off-brand, and then we've used a lot of the ball or the Kerr uh, lids, and they've all worked really well. Uh, the off-brands work just as well as the Kerr and the ball. Uh, we tried the plastic reusable Tadler lids and nearly half of the ones that we used uh, lost their seal. So we completely gave up on those. We don't use those at all anymore because I just don't trust them at all. Um, I, I don't know what it is. There's some kind of a design flaw there. But uh, but we're really well stocked on, on on metal lids, and I really wanted those those Tadlers to work because it would have been nice to have a reusable option uh unlike the metal lids you use them one time and 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 that's all you can do um but they didn't work so you stock up on the metal ones and you move on we can meatballs which turned out really really good we just put a little uh, pasta sauce in the jar with them and 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 cook the meatballs in the jar with the sauce in the canner uh, we also tried meatloaf, which it tasted good, but the presentation uh, lacked something to be desired. So uh, you have to kind of spoon it out. So you, you basically have like scoops of meatloaf on your plate, which if you're starving, you're not going to mind. But like I said, all of the stuff that we that we have for long term storage food, we eat all of that stuff on a, on a regular basis. So we try to make things that, that we're going to enjoy eating uh, throughout the year anyway. Another great tip for meatballs or, or or any kind of a meat that you're going to be canning, uh, we like the wide mouth jars. It's just so much easier to get stuff in and out of the wide mouth jars, and uh, they're easier to easier to clean too. So I always recommend using the wide mouth jars for canning the meat. Like I said, it's easier to get the food in. It's easier to get it back out. And if you stick to just wide mouth jars, you'll only have to stock up on one size of the lids. Now, if you're already stocked up on regular mouth jars, then don't go changing them on my account. Uh, regular mouth jars are just fine. And it's just a little bit easier to work with the wide mouth jars. We also can pork and we can turkey. And I'm going to try canning some chicken this summer. We get the boneless, skinless chicken breast from Zycon Fresh. And we get it for $1.69 a pound. You have to buy a case, which is about 20 pounds. Uh, but uh, Zycon Fresh is a fantastic prepper resource. And they deliver to most areas in the in 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 the country. So um, if 20 pounds is going to be too much for you, you just don't have the storage space for it, or you just don't want to deal with that much, uh, look into splitting it with another family perhaps. But uh, Zycon has great deals on chicken, salmon, shrimp. Uh, lean ground beef. So if you're interested, you can check them out at ZyconFresh.com and see when they're going to be in your area next. We've bought a few of the 20 year, 20 year shelf life foods. We buy uh, oatmeal, cornmeal, some powdered milk, things that were cheaper to buy in the larger uh, 20 year shelf life containers than purchasing the items separately and then having to buy the buckets or having to seal it in, uh, in the uh, food saver bags. And uh, those are already packaged for maximum storage time. You can't really beat it for for that. You don't have to. You can just stick them in a in a closet or under the bed or whatever, and uh, not have to worry about it for 20 years. And one of the few dehydrated 20 year shelf life foods that we do stock up on is uh, soup mixes. 
Uh, you can get broccoli and cheddar soup or cream of chicken soup, um, several different things. And, and that's something that you can add to your rice to make a completely different meal. So uh, we really, really like that. Bouillon cubes are great for flavoring your rice also, and they're super cheap. We've got beef and chicken flavored cubes. For breakfast items, there's several options. We really like the Krusty's uh, Heart Healthy Pancake Mix. It stores really well. Uh, that's another thing that's uh, that that can get bugs in it. So that's another thing that if we're if you're going to stock up a whole lot of it, I would recommend keeping it in the the food saver bags. It stores really well, and the the great thing about it is it already has the milk and the eggs dehydrated already in the mix. So you just add water. And they're really about the best pancakes we've ever made, and we love those. And uh, honey and syrup, they both also store well, especially if you're getting uh, natural maple syrup. It stores really, really well. And honey, they found honey in the pyramids that was still edible. So uh, thousands of years old that it was, it was, it was uh, still edible. In couponing, if that's the best thing you can do for your food storage plan, uh, I can't talk enough about couponing. My wife came home last week with about 10 or 12 cans of pineapple tidbits that she got for free last week. Actually, I think they were like a three cent money maker on each one. So, uh, she made like 30 or 36 cents, something like that on, um, on, on those cans on top of getting the, the cans for free. And it's just about every week she'll find freebies or things that are almost free. She started couponing when we first started prepping. She was able to build up a six-month stockpile without going over our normal weekly food budget, which at the time was about $50 a week. Uh, you'd be eating a lot of beans and rice if you tried to do that now, but there's still tons of deals out there if you look around. If you want to learn more about couponing, check out the Prepper Recon Coupon Corner. Uh, my wife keeps that site up, and she's got lots of great links on there. So just go to the home page and click the Coupon Corner tab on the, the top page at the, on the menu bar. And the easiest way to track how much food you have is to start keeping an Excel spreadsheet on all your bulk items. Every container has the amount of calories per serving and the number of servings on the package. Just add it all up, then divide by your family's caloric intake for the day. For example, a 20-pound bag of rice has about 33,000 calories. If you're consuming 2,500 calories a day, that's going to last you about 13 days, or it will last two people about six and a half days. If you live in a small space, you're probably going to have to get creative with where you're keeping all of your food. One of the best places to store food is under your bed. Walmart sells platform bed frames, which eliminate the need for a box spring, and it adds several inches of storage under your bed. They run about $100 for a heavy-duty one. Uh, and those plastic tote bins, they fit perfectly under a platform bed frame. And they hold a lot of food. Uh, just make sure it's all vacuum sealed so you're not attracting bugs under your bed. Uh, you can also prop up the four corners of your box springs with a concrete block on each corner for around $10. But your bed's going to be uh, much higher than normal, but that's a way to cut costs if you just don't have the 100 bucks to uh, to spend on the, the bed frame. And the great thing about those bed frames, you can order those on walmart.com and they'll ship them straight to your house. So it's not something you have to go and lug home from Walmart that just shows up at your door. You bring it in, set it up, and you're done. And you might have to clear out some junk uh, to make room for your food storage. But if it's a priority, you're going to find the room. So I hope this has been informative and if you have any ideas for another topic for our next uh, Prepper powwow, shoot me an email. It's PrepperRecon at gmail.com. God bless and happy prepping. In Seven Cows, Ugly and Gaunt, Book One, Behold Darkness and Sorrow, Daniel Walker begins having prophetic dreams about the judgment coming upon America for rejecting God's word. Through one of his dreams, Daniel learns of an imminent threat of an electromagnetic pulse attack sending the country into a technological dark age. If they want to live, Daniel and his friends must focus on faith, wits, and preparation to be ready before the lights go out. Buy your copy of Seven Cows, Ugly and Gaunt, Book One, Behold Darkness and Sorrow, by best-selling author Mark Goodwin. In paperback, Kindle, or audio edition from Amazon.com today.